How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Off the Rails, a recovery podcast dedicated to ending the stigma of addiction through open discussion on all things recovery related. My name is Mark, and with me always are Dave and Jared. And Jared, would you do the favor of introducing our special guest today? Yeah, so today we're pretty excited to have Christopher Jackson on. He's from Kingston, where I'm from, and he's a local musician love his music um and uh he likes to give back to the community um when Bree had cancer he reached out to her and actually did a fundraiser for us to raise some money so he's a great guy and we're excited to hear his story thanks for having me gentlemen thanks for joining us thanks, thanks chris so chris what we do most times uh we get our guests to kind of share their stories and you know, talk to us about how, you know, substance abuse has affected their life and and kind of take us through their early life and, you know, what active addiction looked like and kind of how recovery has been and and what you have been doing that works for you. So uh, anywhere you would like to start, you know, it's your story to tell. um, We'd love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, Well, let's go way back. Uh, I was born and raised in Chatham, Ontario. Uh, about 45 minutes east of Windsor and uh, ever since I was uh, old enough to walk I guess uh, music has been a passion of mine you know even before I really knew what it was you know like I think I was playing drums and strumming guitars before I could talk Um, and then I just uh, I wasn't an academic really um school wasn't really my thing I was always thinking about music and playing rock and roll and and uh following those dreams so about grade 10 uh I dropped out dropped out of school and thought that I'd go and become a rock star so my buddies and I we uh took off to Toronto now around that time uh i think between grade eight and grade nine i started smoking cigarettes with my buddies and then uh in around grade nine between grade nine and ten that's when i started smoking uh pot and uh and it all started from there we went to toronto and uh tried to make musical connections and just that that whole scene uh with uh music and rock and roll and uh with stars in your eyes it uh it almost goes hand in hand with uh with drugs and alcohol and so that was the first time i actually tried uh cocaine uh, when we went to to and i was about 18 somewhere around there and uh, that was it, you know, um, partying, playing rock and roll, uh, drinking, smoking, doing lines. Uh, that's where it all started. And then, uh, so you skip forward, um, playing in bands and uh, playing in the bars. It, it's, like I said, it's, it's, it goes hand in hand. It's a, you know, it's a, music is a wonderful thing, but also has a dark side when you're out there gigging. And um, it just got to the point where, you know, it, uh, it was every weekend. And then as I got older and uh, I got settled down in Kingston and my gigs became a little bit uh, uh, busier. Um, I, uh, people would show up and it was a regular occurrence to uh, be handed drugs and uh, I didn't have to go searching for it, that's for sure. And um, so then it just became not a treat anymore, you know, like it was, you know, I'd have a gig on a Friday night um, and then uh, we'd drink tons you know somebody'd walk up behind me and I'd go in my pocket and I got a big bag of weed and then uh, somebody would have a couple of bumps waiting for me in the bathroom and, and then it wasn't just a, like I said a treat anymore it was like every weekend and you'd wake up the next day at noon hung over from the night before you got a gig that night so you're gonna have to take another hit right and shake it off and do it all over again and it just uh you know weekend turned into three four days a week 
and it got to, to the point where it was a it was a crapshoot, you know, like one night you could go out and party with your friends and uh, carry on like a, like a madman and have a great time. And then the next night, something stupid would happen or you'd say something stupid or just, you know, like it was a crapshoot. It was a gamble. And uh, I just didn't want to take that chance anymore. I had too much on the go. And I uh, just, uh, there was a catalyst and I made a stupid move. And uh, I don't usually air my dirty laundry out on social media, but it was the, um, the first day of lockdown and nobody knew what was going to happen. Nobody. And I was in the house by myself and I didn't know I, like, who I was going to see next and for how long. I didn't know how long I was going to be alone for. And everyone was in the same boat. We just didn't know. And so I went on social media, I went on Facebook without naming any names and, and whatnot. And I just said, listen, you know, I, I screwed up and I hurt some people that were close to me. And uh, I'm giving it up. I'm changing. So I made myself accountable on social media as opposed to doing it quietly. And then if I fell off the wagon, nobody would know any better anyway. So that's why I... I did that. I, that's why I went on social media, just to make myself accountable. And so everybody knew, all right, Chris is going through something. He's got to shake, shake this off and he's got to change his life. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of that. So um, it wasn't so easy to uh, fall off the wagon. You know what I mean? And, uh, and since then, um, I haven't had a toke or a line or a drink since, and it'll be two years in March. And uh, I've never been stronger, happier, or clearer in my entire life. And in fact, since I, I gave up that side of, I can't blame music, you know, but I keep uh, associating it with music. Um, but I, you know, I gave up that side, that, side of my life and uh it just it was the best thing i ever did um i'm nurturing my gift which is music and i'm song i'm a singer songwriter now and i do it every day as opposed to coming home from work and smoking a big joint and de-escalating uh or decompressing i should say from uh, from the day uh, that was just an excuse to get high you know or to have a drink and then you know by the time supper time rolled around you know i was a few drinks in and uh it was just an excuse so um and then since i became sober like everything i love and everything i'm passionate about blossom i was robbing myself for all these years you know just getting high getting drunk and uh parting my life away and uh, I'm creative now I'm writing music that I, I'm loving uh, you know I'm gonna release an album I I I am definite I'm positive that I wouldn't be uh, where I am right now as a person as a musician as a as a partner as a boyfriend um, as a youth worker if I was still um, using, and, uh, that's about it. I got a quick sure. question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, did you did you find like when you were uh, like writing music and stuff when you were in active addiction? Did you find drugs and alcohol that like so you thought would make you write music and do music better? But now that you're sober like that was actually crazy and it's way better now it it that's it, it, you're exactly right like it just i you know uh i was um you know you'd have a few drinks to loosen up and you get the, your guitar out and your pad of paper and you get the your your juices flowing as they say but in fact uh it was a restriction, you know, and I really didn't uh, have a whole lot of material down 
when I was using. And now that I'm sober, it's it, it's crazy. Like, it, you know, I'll, I'll sit there with a the guitar and I'll write out a progression and layer some harmonies and I'm just way more efficient. And it's just, you know, I was lying to myself, uh, thinking that drugs and getting a jag on would help my creative brain, uh, you know, produce music. And it was, you know, it was a crock. It wasn't that way at all. And uh, I'm way more efficient, creative now than I ever been in my life. Chris, have you been performing since then? Or I guess venues haven't really been opened up, but uh, can you speak on that? Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, during these lockdowns, like we had, what, three of them, I, I believe? Um, yeah. In the past couple of years, like it was crazy, you know? And uh, whenever it, it, I was a pretty busy musician in between them because I went from having a full band to solo work and almost in you know maybe a couple months after I, I i got sober and then i went back into the bars and i was like wow you know is it how am i going to do this do i still got it um can i get up there without having a couple of bumps under my belt and a couple of glasses of wine can i do this sober and uh not only could i um i I, I do it way better now. And I'm not, you know, by my third set, I'm not a, you know, a slobbering pile of crap, you know, like, I'm, you know, I, I go home and I don't wait. And the next morning I wake up after a gig at seven o'clock in the morning because I'm a morning person. Didn't know that until I got sober. <laughs> you, know, you know, And I don't feel like a piece of crap. And I yeah. want to do it all over again. And I, I don't dread a gig anymore. And being in that environment, um, I, think I, I think a switch happened. You know, um, unlike a lot of people I know, when it was time for me to quit and, and it was a wake up call, you know, enough was enough, enough of hurting people, enough of um, cocaine. When you're on that stuff, your inhibitions just fly out the window and you become somebody you're not, that you're not and your authentic self is hampered and smothered and you kind of lose like every value you ever have everything but everything mm -hmm. you say do things that you wouldn't normally do and um, it's just it's a crazy drug it's super fun and it's super addictive and it's super evil and it's dirty and it changes you you know like I'm a good guy. I, I I advocate for for lots of different things, and you know when I'm when I'm drunk and high, I don't. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to be that guy. There, I really love this authentic Chris Jackson, and I'm going to do everything I can to nurture that and make sure that he's around all the time. Sorry, Jerry. I was just—I was just gonna say. You said you're a, a youth worker as well. Is that something? Is that your career you've been doing for a while as well, or is that something you've started the last couple years, years or twenty years? Twenty, 20 years uh, this year, this school year. I'm an educational assistant, and I work with uh, um, high needs kids, special needs kids, behavioral kids. I've, you know, I've been in every program <laughs> imaginable within the school board. And, I absolutely love it. I love the children. And, uh, and that's another thing, too. I'm, I'm a role model, you know, and I hear from kids that I worked with when I first started and they're adults now, and, you know, and they, they connect with me and uh, people look up to me to, you know, be a role model at, at, on, on a certain level, you know, like I'm not a superstar or anything like that. That's not what I mean. But you, when you're when you're um, trying to influence youth, you have to practice what you preach, you know what I mean? And you can't be carrying on that way. And, uh, like, and that's just another aspect of my life that was being hampered by drugs and alcohol. And I, I couldn't be happier now. I'm a better youth worker. I'm a better everything. Chris, I had a quick question about, um, again, about performing like through sobriety. Um, you know, 
there are those pressures, whether they're social or internal. Um, is there anything you do to like uh, combat those pressures? Like even if it's something you tell yourself or, you know, kind of advice for people? Um, well, I, again, like, a, like I flipped the switch, but I, I'm certainly not um, going out to certain functions anymore because they have no in, I have no interest in them um, like I avoid certain situations not not because I'm afraid that I'm going to relapse but uh, just because it's just not my it's not cohesive with my lifestyle anymore and I think that really helps with things you know just avoiding certain scenes and uh I'm in bed by 8.30 every friggin' night, whether, you know, if it's a Saturday and I'm not gigging, I'm laying in bed drinking tea, reading a book, and it might not be, it, it might not be very rock and roll of me, but uh, I'm embracing it, and I love it. <laughs> and, I drink, and I drink tea out of a cardinal mug. Don't tell anybody. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, but, Chris. but again... Uh, for me, uh, the, I don't think there's really a trick or, or anything that I'm going by. Unfortunately, uh, like I can't really share anything. I, uh, what I what I think for me is I, like a switch went, and it was time, and uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. And I and I've changed my lifestyle where I avoid. I haven't seen cocaine since. Um, people drink around me. And people smoke around me um i can't really get away from that so much you know but, but i i got a pretty good handle on it and i have no intentions of uh partaking that is awesome was that was that tough for, was that tough early on through recovery the drinking and stuff or um the, not? the drinking yeah because I, I liked my white wine and uh the, the, i really liked my wine um, I wasn't much of a beer drinker because it filled me up too much, you know, and I couldn't, uh, you know, that was just, I felt too bloated, but all my buddies are beer drinkers. And this is the thing. Um, so everyone, like say, to, for example, we were on stage playing, all my guys had a pint of beer and I had a, a glass of wine. Well, I was drinking that wine as fast as they were pounding beer. Wine's 14 percent beers five you know what i'm saying but it, like so i'm the first one to to get sloppy and it was just it, it was a mess you know some nights and it was it wasn't good for anybody but uh yeah as far as uh when i first sorry getting back to your question when i first um got sober i think my, the biggest thing was the, the booze you know the staying away from the booze coping with that the pot um, as soon as I gave it up, it was, I was done. Uh, I, I was pretty comfortable with that. Haven't seen blow since and don't care to, I think at this point, um, it wouldn't bother me. Um, but yeah, I think initially the, the, uh, the hardest, uh, of them all was the, uh, was the alcohol for sure. So did you, you got sober on your own, you, but you attended NA meetings and that's how you did it. Like you, you didn't go the rehab route or anything. No, I did the, uh, and because of lockdown, I did the NA meetings, uh, virtually and, um, it was a huge help. I had a sponsor too. I had a sponsor and I also had a, uh, a counselor, a psychologist, actually, and he was um, a friend of mine, but left the friendly, he was very professional, left our friendship at the door, and uh, we dug, and we talked, and, uh, and my, my um, sponsor, too, um, was there for me, and it was a huge help, and I went to you know, a meeting every day virtually. And I, the silver lining to the lockdown and going virtual was that I, I was motivated to do it every day. You know, if I had to get up, put my clothes on and drive across town or go to Napanee or somewhere, um, it, 
was, you know, there's an inconvenience there, right? Um, so I embraced the virtual meetings. And like I said, I was there, I did them every day for, you know, for quite a while. I haven't been um, probably in about a year, but I still, you know, um, touch base with my, uh, with my sponsor every now and then. You posted your one year chip, I remember on uh, Facebook and I like that was at like the heart of my addiction. I was struggling so but it was bad. And uh, I did not even care if I yeah. woke up or anything. And I know I reached out to you because you were the, one of the first people that I've seen do that on social media. And uh, I just wanted to thank you for that. You kind of pointed me in the right direction and helped me out. So I appreciate that. Right. My pleasure, man. You did all the work, though. But uh, yeah. it was, uh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, but even uh, you just posting that, and that does help people. So that's kind of what we're trying to achieve here. And yeah. So um, I just wanted to say thank you for that. My, oh, my, my pleasure, dude. And it's it's pretty amazing. Uh, it was an eye opener. It was a bit of an awakening to how many people do struggle with this, and um, and what COVID, you know, especially with COVID, you know, like it, it's 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 amazing right now uh, the number of people who are struggling. I uh, since I did that, um, I've had many people reach out to me, and and have stories that related to mine um and in fact this is pretty wild today um i had a musician come over a fellow musician come over and hand me a cd of a song that he wrote about me uh about that day i went on social media two years ago and it's right here oh that's he came, awesome he came over today <laughs> and got it and gave it to me. That's super um, cool. What also? Yeah. What's the name of your, your? You just launched a new website, dude. Did you not? Yeah, I did. So, yeah, Christopher what's Jackson, ChristopherJackson.ca. Okay, Mark, Dave, we'll put that in the description. Right on. Check check it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's got all my music and everything, and I'm going to be dropping an album by the summer, and uh, I want to be a rock star when I grow up. <laughs> look at look at what sobriety does eh? <laughs> it's honestly it's it's amazing it's amazing yeah. like I, like i feel so motivated now um my lungs are wide open um <laughs> you know i'm not smoking pot and and the one thing i did with uh, pot is i mixed tobacco in it like it was 50 50 i didn't smoke cigarettes anymore but i was still smoking you know who am i kidding right and so there was that addiction even. And uh, now that that's over with, like my lungs are wide open and I'm a better singer. And uh, it's just, I'm, I'm an athlete too. Like I played uh, high-end sports for a, a lot of my years, most of my adult life. And uh, like everything, like it just affected everything. Yeah, couldn't be happier. Rob Watkins, that's by awesome. the way, that, that's the musician. I don't know if that's backwards on the camera, but it's Rob Watkins. He's a Kingston guy. And uh, he his song that he wrote is called uh, uh, Not Turning Back. And that is about the day that I went on social media two years ago and, and uh, confessed. <laughs> Incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, pretty wild. We'll have to take a lesson to that. <laughs> Absolutely. I was um, just a question for you on, I mean, you're a musician, uh, songwriter, so you're always, you know, very creative, creative mind. Uh, something that, uh, like a tool that we kind of learned when we're at Newgate is, you know, uh, journaling, which is, isn't something that I did a lot of. And um, I sometimes slack on it. Even, even now I'm trying to get better at it. Uh, was that something you used to do um, like in the past that maybe slipped through? through your addiction times and you just only spent time writing music or are you doing any of that now or is it mostly just writing music that you've kind of put your heart into as far as uh your thoughts yeah like i don't journal but and this is it's interesting uh i'm 49 years old and i've been playing music all my life 
and it's only been in the past you know a couple two three years that i've embraced songwriting so it, it you know that says something you know what i mean um my album's gonna have 10 tunes on it and three or four of them are about recovery and ownership and uh, sobriety and uh, you know having your eyes open for the first time and all that kind of stuff and so music for me is my journal like this is it. I write my my thoughts I heal through music and uh, when you when you put it down on paper and you look at it uh, it, it well they'll they'll tell you in group and, and your counselors will tell you it just it has a bigger effect on you you know you read it back to yourself and when I lay tracks down and uh, some of the songs I couldn't get through for the first while because I get all choked up you know so it's hard to lay tracks down when you're crying and can't you know sing uh but uh like these songs mean something to me and that's and it's healing you know just like anybody writing it down or poems or journals or whatever you know I think it's really important to to have that that's so awesome <laughs> yeah for sure my last question uh, for you is, uh, you know, what would you say to um, someone in the music industry looking to make that step towards towards recovery or sobriety? Uh, reach out, grab a hold of somebody that's been through it, because uh, the stereotypical, you know, music scene, it doesn't, you don't have to have drugs and alcohol and parties to to uh, to live that lifestyle you know to be a musician and to love music and create music and play in the bars you don't need it you don't have it and if you want to get clean and still um, perform um, there's people out there and uh, my uh, my partner she is seriously thinking about uh, she just graduated from queens and got her psych degree and she's talking about developing programs for musicians. She's a big music lover and she's a musician herself and creating support groups for musicians. And there's a, there's a guy um, from the States, Anders Osborne, he's a recovering uh, addict and plays all over the place. And that's what he, and he has that too. The, there's support out there for musicians. And uh, I guess, um, lean on somebody reach out make a connection and uh you know get that support there's lots of musicians out there uh, when i got sober um i was shocked to find out how many musicians around here got sober years ago because the, the you know they had to for one reason or another and uh, they reached out i had so many messages you know people reaching out to me and making connections and uh so they're out there so i guess your the answer to the question is just find somebody lean on someone get that support and uh they're out there call me <laughs> you know uh, i'd be more than happy to you know chat with somebody not that i'm a counselor or anything like that but i uh, there isn't a whole lot that i haven't gone through and uh, and just sharing your experience with somebody that can relate is uh is huge for sure it gets rid of you know any insecurities and you drop your shield and when when you drop your shield and when you when you expose yourself and you're ready to talk about it and ready to own up uh, that's when that's when things start as far as i'm concerned i find too if like helping people helps you so absolutely keeps you accountable mm -hmm. and on the right path and yeah that's what my sponsor would tell me um we would meet we'd have a chat and I would always say, thank you. And he goes, no, thank you. Thank you, because this helps me. And I'm just like, wow, all right. <laughs> we're, we're on the same boat here, you know? Like, he, he, he's, got a few, he's got a few years on me. But, uh, you know, bringing my shit to the table is helping him. So, you know, it's uh, everyone's healing, man. And uh, once you once you get rid of your insecurity and your your ego yeah. and and you own it, and you're ready um you know that's when it happens so i was just gonna say uh i don't even know if it's a question or more of a 
a statement or, or maybe a talking point for, for any of us, but, you know, you talked about, you know, putting it out there on social media to have you have that accountability. Um, I know you can always speak to yourself and kind of your journey. I know before we, we kind of were talking about this idea, I had a lot of anxiety of, of, of putting it out there. And some of the reason being actually is because, Oh shit, if I screw up, you know, it's more people that are going to really more eyes on me. And, um, you know, I guess, I guess it's, it's a good thing to have that accountability and, and the pros definitely outweigh the cons, but, um, I don't know, maybe you could share. Yeah. It's, uh, you like that, that, that's what it is. That's what it was for me anyway. Um, it was, and there was a huge weight lifted off my shoulders as far as, you know, the, my, my catalyst, um, secrets you know we all like when we're going when we're living that life we have secrets man we have dark secrets we have a dark side we do stupid things and we keep them to ourselves and it eats you it eats you up inside and you know you get the, that anxiety that gut feeling you wake up the next morning going oh my god unreal why 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 did i do that and when you <laughs> when you um when you open up and you just, you know, make yourself accountable and you say, I am ready, like enough. It's just like it, a weight lifted off my shoulders and I was ready to do what I had to do, you know, and, and each day I woke up knowing that this is where I need to be. And people know, you know, people don't know the details, but people, people know that Chris Jackson needs to get off booze and drugs and there was no more hiding anything and I got stronger and stronger every day and it was momentum and I couldn't wait to wake up sober and feeling good I was getting addicted to the truth I was getting addicted to feeling good um I couldn't wait you know, and it's just, and it's the same thing. Like you, you get addicted to booze, you, you become an alcoholic and, and anything like that. It's just getting over that hump, you know, and that's the hardest part is just getting there and flipping your switch. And then it's, then it's self momentum. Like it, it will drive itself once you get to a certain point. So you get your support networks in place. Uh, you take ownership. You do all the things that you have to do. I'll take all those steps. And then it's just like once your body starts reacting to these healthy choices, it, it's like, wow, it's, it's an epiphany. You know, it, it, I know it's harder for some people. Uh, some people are, are further down the, the hole than I, than I was. And it, I know it's hard and I know it, 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 it's a different game for, it's a very individual thing, but yet it's not, you know, like, Addiction is addiction. Um, you got to be ready and you got to have your support around you. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not a counselor again, you know, but, um, <laughs> and you got to embrace, you know, find that thing uh, that you love, passion, whether it's sports or bike riding or poetry or whatever my thing is music. Find that thing that um, you were put on this planet to do and embrace it and nurture it while you're going through hell and you will come out all right so we have any uh, more questions for chris no i'm i'm good thanks so much yeah chris uh, thank I think, you so much i think it is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. my pleasure and uh you know reach out to me anytime you guys need anything and you know if there's anything i can do to to help out as far as you know this podcast or you know whatever uh, i'm here awesome Thank fundraiser, you so much. fundraiser or whatever you know reach out if i can help out in any way <laughs> well we, we were spitballing the idea of maybe uh <clears throat> doing some kind of golf tournament down down south in your area so maybe that'd be that'd be cool not only can i play guitar but i can uh i can slice a ball about 230 <laughs> yards <laughs> my kind of guy it's, it's wild to see mm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. right. 
I'll take us out here. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on our podcast, hit us up in the comments below or message us on any of our social media. Thanks again. Living life to justify Isn't how I want to fly In my way I leave those things behind Nothing here I'll compromise Seeing things through new eyes Stay if you must I'm moving